in the early early days of Swift, the very first days of Swift, how quickly did the sort of language fundamentals come together? And what were the language fundamentals in those early days? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think that a lot of the basic ideas that the language started with really have seen their way through and they've gotten refined and improved for sure. But a lot of the ideas were making it so that the language could be extensible. So I've worked with a number of languages, including, you know, you pick C++, for example, it, it allows you to define custom types. So you can define a complex number, for example, but it has a whole bunch of really weird things that are thrown into the language. Why is integer a primitive built-in thing? Why are there all these weird rules that are, that are like hacked into the language? And languages like that have a bunch of, uh, you have dissonance between the library extensible parts of the language and the language core pieces. Um, Java is another example of this, where you have the integers and strings that are kind of built in, but then arrays and dictionaries and things like that are not, right? And one of the the thoughts I had, and this was back when it was mostly a research project, a pet a pet experiment, was, well, how much of this can we push into the library? How much can we how much can we make it open for extension? Because if you uh, build primitive first class things right into the language, then Library developers and application developers can't take advantage of it for their own development, and it's not it's not the case that language developers know everything and they can predict what the world will look like in 20 years. And so, more extensibility seemed like a good thing. So uh, early Swift had trailing closures, for example. It had it had the ability to overload things. It had um, a lot of the ideas, but. Um, particularly the you know 0.0 days didn't have generics didn't have a lot of the features that we wanted to have it just took a long time to build those out because they're more complicated so I think that a lot of the the, the ideas in early Swift really came through um, there's also a lot of ideas that did not work out so well and so some of those were um, you know one of the most notorious examples of an early idea was this idea of being able to overload juxtaposition. So if you have um, x space y, <laughs> you can make that be a function call, or you can make that Ooh. mean different things. And one of the one of the reasons that this seemed interesting was uh, control flow. And so if you think about an if statement, for example, well, the the syntax of an if statement is an if identifier followed by a condition followed by a curly brace enclosed set of stuff. And so one of the things I was interested in from the very beginning was, can this be not built into the language? Can this be a library extension point? And um, and this is where trailing closures became interesting. And it's kind of interesting to see this come back in a way to the Swift world where um, people are interested in more library-based control flow constructs and things like that. So, so yeah, so I mean, I think that early days had many, many ideas, but uh, everything got refined, changed, and it's way better than <laughs> the, the initial imagination. Yeah. I think having so much in the standard library is huge because I, I tell folks, hey, go and go and look at bool.swift. Go and look at optional.swift. They're just structs and enums, whatever, to go and look at directly and see how they solve problems. And you'll be amazed how things like, uh, like uh, ampersand ampersand in bool.swift, it's so simple. It's like a one-liner yep. in Swift, but it's so beautiful, yep. that one-liner. Go and see how they solved it, and you will learn things from that, which is awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a great example, and and auto closures in that case are one one of those things that um, were it was kind of an innovation driven by the needs of solving that problem. How do you get short circuiting behavior, or when you define assert, how do you make it so you can define assert in the library instead of having a macro preprocessor type thing like C does and. Mm. So a lot of those kind of small small pieces like really came from from forcing things in the library in ways that other languages um, haven't done quite so much. Uh, other languages in the C family, I think that Lisp, for example, is a is a perfect example of something that went all the way and pushed everything into the library. Yeah, yeah.